Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and I'd like to talk to you today about the structure of viruses. Now, the thing about a virus is that, you know, for one thing, there isn't just one structure, because there's many different types of viruses, and viruses are, you know, right out of the gate, uh, not living cells. And so these are biological particles, and they can infect different kinds of organisms. They can infect humans, as you know, uh, other animals, they can infect plants, perhaps that you didn't realize that, or even more um, you know, insidious, they can even infect bacteria. And so their structure, which is what this video is all about, um, if you might anticipate, is probably a little diverse because each of those cells of those different uh, types of organisms are slightly different. But what I will say, though I'm gonna try to emphasize some differences, they all kind of are similar. And so basically what I wanna say, most important point, is that a virus is really just a genome or a genome. Uh, you know, like, well, what is that? Well, it's either some kind of DNA or some kind of RNA in, 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 a, in a protective coat. So it's some kind of protein or uh, protein with an envelope uh, lipid surrounding it. So it's basically, uh, as, as simple as that. And so, as you can see here um, in this diagram, this particular virus right here is a rod-shaped virus, and it's made up of protein on the outside called a capsid, and it has nucleic acids on the inside, and in this case, RNA. Now, this is not considered to be alive. The reason is that it doesn't possess any ribosomes, and it doesn't possess the ability to make its own protein, nor does it, it carry along with it the essential enzymes necessary in, to replicate its own RNA or DNA. And so therefore it wouldn't be able to reproduce unless it was reproducing inside another organism. So basically it has to only replicate inside of a host. And so it's a nucleic acid encased in some sort of protein coat, and in some cases, a membranous envelope surrounding it. And so um, this is a picture here of a, a electron micrograph of, of a virus, a DNA virus that causes warts. You may have gotten those once in a while. Um, it's very, very small. Look at this, 15 nanometers in diameter. And so they, they range from that small, 15, all the way up to 300. So I'll say mostly you're not able to see this with a light microscope. You're going to need an electron microscope to see this. So uh, here's the capsid and inside the nucleic acid. And so the genome or genome uh, that we're talking about is, you know, most, most students will think that DNA is double-stranded, and, that, and that's great because most of the DNA is. So it's a, a polynucleotide and then another polynucleotide that is sort of wound around each other in a helix. So this is what we would call double-stranded DNA, okay? But there's other options. Viruses could have this, you know, and again, surrounded by a protein, but they could also have single-stranded. So this could be like double-stranded DNA, and this is single-stranded DNA. Uh, and then you could have, ready for this? Double-stranded RNA. Or you could have single-stranded RNA. So you have all four different types uh, in terms of a structure. And so when you're, you know, you're like, well, okay, DNA or RNA, what are we talking about? How many genes? Well, some of the most simple viruses can even have just four genes. So a gene is a segment of DNA or RNA that usually specifically codes for a particular protein. So this would be one, and then again, you know, blah, 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 two, three and four, but it could even be up to 100. Okay, so they're particularly not very large uh, genomes, but they are what they are. Now, the capsid is usually composed of a protein, but what I want to say about that is that the proteins are sometimes themselves made up of smaller proteins collectively. So what I should say is that they're really polypeptides that combine into a protein. And so these are sometimes referred to in the viral world as capsis, capsomeres. So in other words, like portions of the capsid. And they can take on 
these really interesting shapes, like the shape of a rod, like for example, tobacco mosaic disease, and then you can have the RNA inside. This would be um, a plant, typical of a plant virus, and here it's what it looks like under the electron micrograph right here. So pretty small. So here, this one is uh, adenovirus, and so this has sort of like, if you will, a, a polyhedral appearance, a protein surrounding the nucleic acid inside. And in some cases, some of the proteins can even have these small oligosaccharides, or otherwise known as glycoproteins, extending from them. And you can literally see that in this case. So a capsid, again, the protein, is sometimes built in these protein subunits. So this adenovirus can be 252 identical proteins that are arranged in this polyhedral surrounding the DNA nucleic acid. So this is considered to be the capsid right here. Now this adenovirus, um, which is inside uh, the, the DNA, um, causes uh, typical colds and sometimes pink eye if you've ever had that. Uh, conjunctivitis, uh, and this is what it looks like. So I mentioned at the start of the video that sometimes viruses can even have a membrane surrounding the protein capsid. So here's the protein, here's the RNA inside, and so there's a membranous envelope. So when I say membranous, I'm assuming you have a, a background in the understanding that this, this could be a phospholipid bilayer with proteins, glycoproteins embedded in it. And often the origin of the membranous envelope is the fact that when the virus is budding off of the cell that, it, that it's replicating in, i.e. the host cell, it uses the cell's own membrane as to, to create more envelopes. And so here's a picture of, a, of the flu virus, influenza virus right here that has that membranous envelope. Okay, and so when I mentioned that these envelopes are derived by the host uh, cell, they, they are part of the, the cell membrane of the host, but they also put their own proteins in their membrane. Okay, so they're not completely just the host cell membrane. Now, one of the oddest looking viruses in terms of structure, or one can say coolest looking one, is viruses that particularly affect bacteria. And these are known as bacteriophages. In other words, from the Greek meaning to eat bacteria, although they don't specifically eat it, it's kind of a cool term. Sometimes bacteriophages are just simply known in the microbiology world as just phages. So a phage is a virus that infects bacteria. And they have this sort of polyhedral capsid head. Everything you see here in purple is a protein. So it's rather large. It has it's sort of this a combination of the rod shaped bacteria, uh, bacterial, uh, sorry, rod shaped virus and polyhedral virus collectively, plus these legs, these tail fibers. This is what it actually looks like under the uh, uh, electron microscope. Uh, it's called T4 uh, because it's a particular type of e type even bacteriophage that affects uh, E. coli. And so again, inside the head of the virus is the, is the genome. And so this is the capsid. This whole thing is the capsid. So it's kind of like, a, uh, like an individual, the heck, the, the, the neck, the collar, the sheath right here in the table, uh, tail fibers, which are going to be attacking, if you will, the host, which would be in this case some kind of bacteria like that. And so what's interesting is that the protein itself stays on the outside of the host and it uses this body, it's hollow inside this sheath, and then the nucleic acid is injected down this tube, sort of like a hypodermic needle, into the bacteria. And if you're familiar with one of the great experiments uh, in molecular biology, Hershey Chase use radioactive isotopes to establish that principle that the protein capsid stays on the outside of bacteria because they labeled the radioactive uh, isotope of sulfur, which is found in uh, amino acids, and they labeled 
the nitrogen, or I'm sorry, phosphate, which is found in DNA, and that showed that it went inside of a cell. Pretty cool. So these T phage uh, bacteriophages that inf infect E. coli are 20 sided. They have this sort of, again, this, this column right here, and they use it to inject their nucleic acid into E. coli, and that's how they uh, infect the host. This is a really cool picture, again, scanning electron micrograph, um, or in this case, transmission, apologize. This is the protein capsid right here. Everything you're seeing here is in protein. Here is the tail fibers right here that are attaching onto the host cell down below. And then inside, there would be some sort of nucleic acid. And it's the nucleic acid which then would go inside the host cell right there and infected. So that's, that's pretty neat. So again, different uh, like electron micrograph shot of this. Here's the protein over here, like this. Here's the tail fibers, kind of alien looking, right? And then here is the nucleic acid inside. So those are phages. Now, this is an, a remarkable picture showing that this bacteria is, is not having a good day. It has all of these phages right here attaching to the outside of it. Okay, so this is the protein. And what has happened prior to this is that the DNA has gone inside. It's caused the bacteria to replicate more viruses inside. And what you're seeing is the bacteria literally lysising or rupturing, allowing all of these viral par particles to be released to the outside. So what could, could have started with one virus then produces several hundred that will go on and infect subsequent cells. And so pretty brutal. And so a virus can reproduce basically only within the host cell. So that if this is a, a phage, it can only replicate within the bacteria. So this right here is a pr pretty cool computer generated image of that right there. This is basically the virus sitting on top of the bacteria, and here it is a virus sitting on top of the bacteria. Now when it attaches, these proteins are cap capable of changing their shape, and therefore this central column gets closer to the cell, and basically it injects its nucleic acid into the host. And it can only reproduce inside the host, again, because it's the host that possesses nucleic acids, ribosomes, and basically the machinery enzymes necessary to replicate viruses. So a virus is, that's sitting out on the table or on somebody's clothes is basically um, unable to reproduce. It's just basically waiting to, to, to find a new host. And so uh, it's, that's kind of interesting. And so viruses lack the enzymes necessary uh, for metabolism, they, 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 in particular ribosomes. And so if you're familiar with this, the ribosome is basically an organelle inside the bacteria. Let's go here. This is the bacteria not drawn to scale. So when the virus is out here in the protein, like this, and then what happens is it will inject its DNA into the host. So this is now viral nucleic acid, say it's viral DNA. Well, what it, the ribosome recognizes messenger in our RNA, and so what the viral DNA needs to do is use the enzymes present in the bacteria, in other words, RNA polymerase, isn't that brutal? And then it uses the bacteria's own RNA nucleotides, further brutal, <laughs> in order to make viral messenger RNA. And so the ribosome really can't tell the difference between viral messenger RNA and its, and its own messenger RNA. And so what it'll do is it'll read it and crank it out. And guess what protein it's going to be making on these genes? That's right, it capsid virus ones. So that's, that's pretty vicious, like there, like that. And so you're going to also need to replicate viral DNA. So viral DNA is being replicated by the bacterial cell polymerase. DNA polymerase, and then that's incorporated right there, and then ultimately the cell will rupture, and more and more of these viruses will uh, 
go out and infect future cells. So pretty, pretty rough going. So an isolated virus really just can't reproduce. It doesn't have any of these, these things. And so what you're seeing here is uh, the host cell and you're seeing some viruses uh, attaching onto them right there. And so what I wanna emphasize in this picture is the fact that the virus is really specific to particular cell types. So when you classify viruses, you can say that they're animal viruses, there are plant viruses, and there's bacteria viruses or phages, bacteriophages. And that is because there's a unique lock and fit, uh, lock and key fit between the receptor proteins on the host cell membrane and the proteins found on the virus it itself. And so there's kind of a limited host range, if you will. So oftentimes in molecular biology, scientists prefer studying, depends on what you're doing, but we prefer studying bacteriophages because we're not the host. And so we're not likely to be infected by a bacteriophage. But there are some interesting uh, uh, consequences with this. As I was mentioning how the, the virus will only attack specific cell types. Now, it's not only different organisms, but it can even be different tissues. And so that's, that's, uh, that's useful to know. And so a, 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 an example that is an exception to this rule is something like rabies. You may have heard of this before. You're like, well, I, I hope that squirrel doesn't bite me when I'm feeding it. You should probably shouldn't be feeding the squirrel. But it, if, the, if the squirrel has rabies, maybe the rabies virus will infect you as well because it's particular, it has a particularly broad range. And so it can affect several species. And in fact, we can be infected by, uh, by rabies and bats carry it as well. And so, but, but most viruses will, will be very specific. And even eukaryotic viruses are sometimes tissue specific. For example, uh, we have uh, viruses that will affect just the sort of respiratory tract or mucous membrane of, of our own body and what causes colds. And HIV, if you're familiar with that, causes AIDS and it particularly, there's a few exce exceptions to this, but it prefers white blood cells. And so when HIV virus comes in, uh, it'll attack uh, T lymphocytes in particular, helper T lymphocytes. And here's an example other than rabies is H1N1 is sometimes known as the swine flu, which uh, suggests that it affects pigs, and it can also infect humans, as you might know. And so, though the, the, this video is looking specifically at structure, I've been talking a little bit about replication. So let me finish with that. So virus, here's the protein capsid, here's the nucleic acid. When, once it injects its nucleic acid, what it's going to basically need to do is replicate more and more DNA, then use the DNA as a template using RNA polymerase to transcribe more messenger RNA, and then on the, the host cell's ribosome, make more protein capsids, and then assemble those, and then those bud off, and the virus is able to replicate. Notice it's only able to replicate within the host cell, because the virus structure itself is, is not capable, and so that's the important point. It's basically the structure of a virus is a protein uh, surrounding a nucleic acid. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the structure of uh, a variety of viruses. Thanks for watching.